Hi, in this activity, we will gather PDU information in simulation mode and answer a series of questions about the data we collect. Here are the reflection questions that we have to answer. Now we move on to part one, gather PDU information for the LAN network. Firstly, I will ping from this PC to this PC. As you can see, we get four reply from the destination PC. Now, I switch to simulation mode. Then, I turn back to command prompt and ping to the destination PC again. Then I click on play button and then stop. Now, we examine the information on the first packet. Here, a device the IP address of the source device. And here, the outlier, you can see on layer three, this is the IP address of the source device and the detonation IP address. On layer two, this is the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. And layer one is the port gigabit Ethernet of the PC. Then I examine the second packet. The source and the destination MAC address are the same. Layer 1 port gigabit Ethernet is of the switch 1. And the out layer, this out layer here, is the port gigabit Ethernet 3 slash 1 is here. And I continue playing. Now the packets arise at the hub. You can see because hub operates at layer one only. You can see the port uh, port fat as an S zero on at uh, the hub. The out layer fat Ethernet one fat Ethernet two one and two two ports at the bottom of the hub. Now I click play. As you can see, one packet is received at the destination and one packet with the red X because the IP address of ZPC is not match with the, uh, the destination IP uh, in the packet. Then I play again the reply to the hub and the hub broadcast the packet to all other port and this cancel and then reply to the switch and from the switch to the source and I stop. Now you can open each packet, ICMP packet and see hub up to the switch. There's a the destination mark address of the destination PC. This is a reply ICMP and it is a mark address of this PC, the PC to the port. You can examine each ICMP packet carefully. It's the same that turns mark red of the PC. This one, the source IP chain. It chain the source IP and the destination IP. Uh, the mark red is the same. And the last ICMP, a device, uh, it's at the, this PC with the all the information
on step 2, you should repeat the process in step 1 and gather the other information for the pin from the PC.2 to .3 and the PC.4 to .5 and then you return to real time mode. Now we move on to part 2 to gather the PDU information for remote network communication. So in order to communicate with remote networks, a gateway or a router is necessary. Now we will study the process that takes place to communicate with devices on remote network. You should pay close attention to the MAC address used. The first step, we will gather PD information as packet travel from this PC to this PC. We get three replies from the destination PC. I ping again. Okay, now switch to simulation mode and ping again. The packet appear on the source PC. I click on it. On layer 2, this is the source MAC address and now we examine this MAC address 741A. Now I click on this PC and check for the MAC address. This is the MAC address of the wireless zero interface 4AB6. But on layer 2, it is 741A. So, what is this destination MAC? So, the answer is it is the MAC address of the port, this port on the router. Now we examine the port, this port. Now I click view, option, show port label. Show port. It's FA1 slash 0. I click on it again. You can see the MAC address of the FAT Ethernet 1 slash 0 is 741A. 741A. So when you ping from this PC to this PC on the remote network, the destination MAC address of the packet that sent from the source address to the destination IP address is the MAC address of the port, the nearest port on the router. I click play and then stop and examine the information. The MAC address of the FAT Ethernet 1 slash 0. Next stop and examine you know the IP address the destination IP address is the same now the destination red of the port and now you can see the mark address 4AB6 is of the MAC address of this PC
for a B6, a device router. So on the router, the destination MAC address is encapsulated onto the pin packet. And from this router, it can travel to the destination with the destination MAC address of the PC, this PC. click and then stop and check for a b6 for a b6 next on the access point the layer one operation next you get the information on the device 10, 10, 10, 2. IP the wireless, layer 2 the wireless. And on this PC, you can see the X red because the destination IP red is not, is not much. Then click play again. Stop, and we can see uh, I layer one operation. Then stop. You check. You can see the destination MAC address is two four zero one. It's the MAC address of the of this port, the port FA zero slash zero on the router. Now we click next and stop and examine the information layer one operation. Next router to the switch one, router switch one. You can see the C7 double eight mark address, destination mark address is of the PC, this PC. You can check. C seven double eight C seven double eight. When do we get the reply from the destination? So the now the MAC address is of the this PC. So when we ping or communicate to the remote network, so the MAC address is firstly encapsulate with the MAC address of the nearest port on the router or the MAC address of the default gateway. So after traveling through the router, the MAC address is encapsulated with the MAC address of the destination uh, host. Next, we will answer reflection question. The first one, were there different types of cable or media used to connect devices? As you can see on the topology, we have copper straight through cable to connect any devices to the hub and switch. We also have fiber media to connect from the switch to the router, copper straight through cable and the wireless media. The question number two, did the cables change the handling of the PDU in any way? Because you know that the IP address is independent from the media. So the, the cable did not change the handling of the PDU in any way. Number three, did the hub lose any of the information that it received? The hub lose uh, one or one packet when sending to this port to uh, this PC because the this packet has the IP address that's not match with the destination IP address of this PC. 
The same on the access point. What does the hub do with MAC addresses and IP addresses? The hub did not do anything with MAC and IP address because the operation of the hub is flood the packet to own the port when receiving from one port. Number five, did the wireless access point do anything with the information to it? The access point will flood the packet to all the hosts that is connected to it. Number eight, did the hub or access point ever replicate a PDU that would reject with a red X? The answer is, it didn't or did not replicate the PDU because it was rejected with the red on end devices. Number nine, when examining the PDU detail tab with MAC address appear first, the sort of the destination, the source will appear first because the switch have to read the destination to switch to the appropriate port or outgoing port. Number 10, why would the MAC address appear in this order? Uh, this is the answer of me on the question number nine. Uh, now we have uh, uh, question 11 to 20. You can uh, do it yourself because it's uh, very easy. Thanks for watching.